Hi, I'm Mark Tewart, and I wanted to talk to you about a common objection that every salesperson will hear, probably more than any other, other objection that you'll ever hear, and that's, I want to think it over. Let me get back with you. First of all, you may have heard an old phrase that's true, that's when somebody says no, it's no, not now, that I don't have enough information to make a decision. And you may add emotions in that, that no, not now, I don't have enough overriding emotion to feel good about making this decision. So just remember that no is not necessarily no, don't equate it to you. It just is what it is, and now we got to try to get past this if it's possible. So, let me give you an example of somebody buying a vehicle that says, uh, I want to think it over, let me get back with you. First of all, always react positively and acknowledge what they said. Sure, absolutely, I understand. It's a really big purchase, and I would expect you to take all the time necessary for you to feel comfortable. What do you think you'll need? Week, two weeks? So what I'm doing is planting a seed to take them a little bit forward, take them out of the pressure of now. I call that future-paced selling, P-A-C-E-D, future-paced selling. Well, you need a week, two weeks, and a lot of times a customer will reply back to you, probably not, Mark, I don't think I'll need that long, just want to take a night or two and think it over, speak about, with it, about, my, uh, about it with my spouse, and go from there. So after I've said, what do you think you'll need a week or two weeks, and they respond back, I just try to give them forward thinking where I say, Mr. Customer, if you're like me, when you go to think about things, a big purchase like this, you're probably going to be thinking about a couple of different things. You're going to be thinking about what you're buying, who you're buying it from, and the money you're spending and does it fit in your budget, etc. Is that fair to say? Well, I think anybody's going to agree with that because you gave them the categories. So now I said, Mr. Customer, let me ask you this, if I may. Um, on the vehicle itself, was the ride okay? And now I start breaking down the categories that make up that vehicle. We call this money, me, and machine, and this is the machine part. So was the ride, the style, the handling, the color, the equipment. Was there anything you would like to add, change, or fix about that vehicle? So I'm writing it down and I'm check marking it in front of them, showing the physical uh, and visual that this decision about the vehicle is okay. If it's not, you can't fix a car problem with money problem usually. So I want to make sure the vehicle's right. And then I look at them and I say, Mr. Customer, silly question, but have I done anything to offend you today? And when they say, no, Mark, if I'd buy from anybody, I'd buy from you, I write down me right in front of them. I check it off. I just let them know visually once again, the car's okay and I'm okay. And then I look at them and I say, well, it's probably a money issue, and I understand because it's a lot of money, and when you go to spend that kind of money, you want to make sure that you're totally comfortable. However, the word decide, the root of it means to cut off, to cut off from all other possibilities. And when you get ready to decide to buy that vehicle and spend that money, I understand that that causes some trepidation, some fear. It's only normal. It is a lot of vehicle. It's a lot of money. But let me ask you this, Mr. Customer. Knowing that the vehicle is right, knowing that we're okay, the dealership, me, service department, etc. When you're talking money, if I could ask you, are you talking primarily, when I think of money, I think of uh, down payments, monthly payments. Is that the main thing with you? Now, it could be price, trade, down payment, monthly payment. But most of your customers, we know, whether it's a high line, whether it's a smaller used car, it probably boils down to budgets of monthly payments and payments. So when they say yes, if they do, I write down budget and I write down payment, down payment. So, Mr. Customer, let me ask you this. Silly question. If it were $1 down and $1 a month, knowing what we know about the vehicle and about us, would you be driving it home today? I think it's safe to say that that's the case. So, Mr. Customer, knowing that if you could love this vehicle enough and trust us enough that you'd be driving it home for a dollar, with a dollar down. Somewhere between a dollar and the figures of the budgets that we showed you for down payment, monthly payment, is still a place where you would feel comfortable to go ahead and do business. Whether it's today in the future, wouldn't you agree with that? So when the customer says yes to that, I say, Mr. Customer, let me ask you this. Your dream deal, your ideal situation, if you could walk in here and get this vehicle from us for X down payment, and X payment, what would that dream deal be? Shut up and look at them. And if they say, oh, I'm not sure, that's what I gotta think about, say, if you had to guess, 
If you had to guess, what would it be? Down payment, your monthly investment, and your upfront investment. If you like the words investment better than down payment, use that. So I just write those figures down, no matter how low, outrageous, or crazy they are. And then I ask them to commit at that. I said, Mr. Customer, if that's your dream deal, if that's your ideal situation, whether it's today, two days, three days from now, a week from now, 10 days from now, whatever it is, it doesn't get better than that. Nothing venture, nothing gain. If this is your dream deal, let's, you and I, see if we could get management to approve this. And if we do, then you bought your car at a dream deal. Fair enough. Now the customer, we either agree to that or not. If they do, then you've got a commitment. One thing I know is that if somebody commits at some figure, the chances that they will buy, and buy today or in the future, goes up exponentially because they've made the mental and emotional decision to commit. That's the hardest part. Now, if they don't, what do you do at this point? The management may talk to them and see if there's still a possibility, and if not, what are the figures in their brain, at least in their subconscious, in their perception, that they are walking out of there with. They're walking out of there with the numbers of their dream deal and their ideal situation. See, what I'm trying to do is lead them down a path by creating risk reversal where I'm taking any potential risk, any potential fear of making a mistake. And remember, always use a mistake close. Mr. Customer, one thing I can assure you is based upon the car you're driving, that you're picking out, that you're buying, your trade-in, all the figures, etc., you are not making a mistake. And remember to re-demo. Re-demo, re-demo, re-demo. If they won't buy and you can't get them committed after all is done, say, I have an idea, I have something I'd like to share with you, I think it'll make a difference, walk them back to the vehicle and say, when we talk about figures for so long, we tend to forget about what the figures are attached to. You didn't come in for a monthly payment, you came in for a vehicle. Now, we can always make money work somehow, some way. I wanted to go back over a few things you told me you really liked about this. Get them back to the heart and out of just the mind. When the heart and the mind are connected, people buy. If it's just logic, if it's just negotiating, 15, 20 minutes, they're in their mind and logic only. And let me share with you, people don't take action that way. You need leverage. And leverage is created through emotions by trying to paint a picture that makes them feel good that they can see themselves in acting and doing in their lives. So one of the other things to do is think about future pace selling. Mr. Customer, a month from now, two months from now, three months from now, you're buying a car, you're driving off the lot, you're waving to the salesperson, everything's perfect, you're very happy. Can you see that in your mind's eye? And when they reply yes, ask them, Mr. Customer, what's the one thing? One thing that's happening three months from now, you're driving off the lot, that allowed you to do business and feel great on that day. No fear taking delivery of the vehicle. What's that one thing? Now you know what the final, final objection is that you got to cure. So what I've tried to do is take you through the I'll take it over, give you some ideas for risk reversal, some future pace closing or selling, ways to open things up, and some ideas of why people do and do not take action. I'm Mark Tewart. Go to my website at tewart.com, T-E-W-A-R-T.com, or you can call us at 888-283-9278. The easiest way to remember that is 888-2-TOUR. Thanks, and may you have your best year ever.